Ah, there you are. Okay, welcome in to our usual Wednesday stream. And uh, today, a very special guest on the show. We'll be talking to our good friend, Andrew, um, about, well, something quite specific today. Uh, just a reminder, if you're here for the first time, if you're worried about your drinking, then congratulations on finding something that might actually help. Uh, if you want to take the next step, then go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com and sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. I'll even give you a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up. But job number one, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. So today we're talking about uh, the aging effect of alcohol, because if you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had a bit of a rant. I was on my soapbox about this um, company that was selling brandy, and they were making outlandish claims that brandy protects you from this and helps with this. But one of the things they also stated, which is just complete nonsense, was that drinking alcohol, brandy specifically, helped keep you looking young. So I thought I'd bring in a man who knows a lot about this. Uh, he's been on the show before. He's a good friend of mine. It's Andrew Bridgewater. Andrew, hello. Hello, Craig. Great to be back. <laughs> um, thanks for coming back on. It's been a while since we did one of these. Yeah, it's about a year, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, last time you were on, we were talking about mental health, um, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, all that sort of stuff, all things that we know that are uh, exacerbated by alcohol, even as though a lot of people who use alcohol uh, do so in the belief that their drinking is helping with their mental health problem. Um, but you're working on something new at the moment, and that is, is uh, I, I well, summarize it for me yourself. Well, you let me wheel it back a bit, Craig. You you mentioned the uh, the brandy nonsense mm. uh, at the stop at the start. Um, I have a confession. I used to work for big alcohol. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was a graduate trainee with the biggest brewer in the UK in the nineteen eighties, right. and um, I thought I'd landed my dream job. I had a beer allowance that I couldn't give away. They paid for me to do an MBA. I got some experience across different functions of the business and um, I'm not even going to mention the name because I'm so embarrassed but uh, yeah how on earth did that happen now with what I now know about alcohol and I was one of the conspirators so, so uh, it, it doesn't surprise you to hear that sort of nonsense peddled then because you've seen it from well, the inside I've I mean do they, the do they really believe yeah. that or do they is it, is it a case of like the cigarette companies back in the 80s when they they knew that they were killing their customers, but they still outright denied it? Well, if I'm honest, Craig, I think they didn't really know. I mean, for example, you could have three pints of beer at lunchtime in a canteen for free and go back and work in the afternoon. As I say, I had more beer than I could give away in an allowance. The, the social... Um, side of it was considered to be so important that, yes, we knew that alcoholism was a problem. But I used to go out with the draymen as part of my training, and they would drink seven or eight pints on the drays in the morning. They'd sweat it off, putting 36-gallon barrels into a cellar, but it was considered normal. And um, it is where mm. cigarette smoking was in the 1960s. Um, but we didn't know any better in the 1980s. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest, I, I don't think, apart from some awareness of alcoholism, I mean, many publicans were alcoholics, so they stopped drinking, a lot of them. They couldn't drink because it was just freely available. And when we brought EPOS in, electronic point of sale in 1988, a lot of them were found out because every pint they put in <laughs> was, uh, was very obvious. They couldn't stop, yeah. start just, just doing it anymore. But I know it, 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 things have changed. And as I say, I didn't know any better, but I was only in my mid-20s. Yeah. So and I think, you know, what the, the thing, sorry, we have oh, a slight ahead. delay, I think, um, I th you know, I remember the days of the liquid lunch and, you know, back in the, the 80s, 90s, it was it was the done thing. But and I think people assume that now things are, have, have completely got better and we've got healthier as a society as a result. But I think it's just gone underground. It's, you know, instead of having seven pints at lunchtime, people are going to the supermarket and buying, you know, buy one, get two bottles free of wine, and they're taking it home and drinking it at home. I think that's right. There's been a massive shift. I mean, we used to talk about wet and dry trade in the pubs. So wet trade was, was alcohol. 
and drinks and dry trade was food and actually wet take was huge. It was it was 80 to 90 percent of the take. But you don't get wet pubs anymore. Most pubs to survive have had to sell food. So, as you say, it's gone underground. It's gone. It's gone the off trade, as we used to call it. Yeah. So um, your new project is about helping people not. Well, to feel younger than their ages, I guess, is really what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if ageing is is inevitable, which clearly it is, why not do it joyfully? Um, and, you know, I, I genuinely think you can. Um, I'm 61, turned 61 December. I feel like I'm 40, if not even slightly younger, because I've, A, made a life decision to squeeze the juice out of life. And B, I do some simple things, which some of which you know about. And I've got my props here as usual. Okay. <laughs> I'll share them. But it's it's such a wonderful way to live. Um, and alcohol is a big factor in this because, um, you know, it does appear to give us some stress relief. It does appear to make us more sociable. It appears to help us enjoy life, but we know that it's a big lie, hence the title of your book, Alcohol Lied to Me. And as I said, when I read your book, it reprogrammed, rewired my brain around this whole alcohol nonsense. And um, I did dry January in 2021, and I've never gone back, as you know, haven't touched a drop of it since, not even in Christmas pudding or brandy sauce. So yeah. it's been a major life shift for me. And um, I know I feel better. I sleep better. Um, my skin tone is better. <laughs> we get all very vain about these things later in life, particularly. But why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to feel yeah. great? I mean, it seems to me that the alcohol is the first domino. Um, I mean, is it even possible to to follow your plan to to feeling younger if alcohol is involved in your life? I, I just just did a coaching session before we jumped on together, mm. and the lady I spoke to, yeah. she was in America, and she said she. Um, she gave me a list of things she wanted to fix, but it was almost like if you fix the alcohol, everything else is fixed because she wanted to stop smoking. But she said to me, I only smoke when I drink. I never smoke unless I drink. And I, I only eat bad food and junk food when I drink. So it seems to me that if you've got alcohol in your life, you're kind of setting yourself up to fail. Does that sound right? Well, this is, I get it, but I still think it's a bit of a narrative that people tell themselves that mm. alcohol is first domino and if you can't get that one to fall nothing else will go well i'll give you a different philosophy craig you've seen me drinking this stuff and you yeah. i know you, you <laughs> say it tastes like glass, <laughs> very rude but the, the point is that when you get healthy at a cellular level yeah. and you introduce toxins in the form of alcohol and nicotine your body will repel them you will literally throw up now that is a very different approach get healthy and then watch the alcohol fall away instead of trying to give up alcohol to get healthy. Interesting. Interesting and I, point. I would urge people to try that. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it makes sense. You know, you, if you're going to the gym or you're working out or you're exercising on a regular basis, um, it, it's kind of hard to imagine you then having a couple of pints. It would take away all the benefits you felt from, from the exercise. Well, not just to take away the benefits, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. Um, yeah. I mean, some famous footballers like George Best used to drink copious amounts of beer after football and then be able to sweat it off. But we know what happened, you know, he died of, of liver failure, even having had a transplant. Very, very sad story. I watched him give a talk in Leamington Spa in the 1980s and he drank two bottles of wine on stage, barely coherent. But he was a hero. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, you wouldn't want to drink. Um, you wouldn't want to uh, drink and then uh, after exercise because you are going to feel rubbish. So as I say, if you get healthy at a cellular level, alcohol and nicotine will be abhorrent to your system. We, we, we see these TV shows, uh, you know, 10 years younger, things like that, where they, they, they take someone, give them a makeover and make them look 10 years over. There's this kind of thing about 10 years, but I'm guessing... Mm -hmm. You're saying that it's following your principles. It's more than that. You can go 20 years back because you're 61 you and you were saying you feel like years. a 40 year old. So what's the secret? Yeah, not only that. Well, not only that, just before I answer the question, old age needn't be a process of decrepit 
decline. And I think a lot of people fear old age. They fear what will happen to their body. But actually, you can ensure against this with some small, simple changes. You've heard me talk about the slight edge. Small, simple things add up to a massive difference. That's the book by Jeff Olson, Slight Edge, Secret to a Successful Life. And I always love giving you the metaphor. Would you rather have a million pounds today, Craig, or a penny doubled in value every day for 30 days? You fell straight into yeah, it last I'll time. I'll have a million said, pounds today. <laughs> well, I hate to tell you, just kiss goodbye to four and a half million in the in 30 days' time, as you well know. <laughs> you know what? Even though you've just told me that, I still would take the million today <laughs> because I'm, I, <laughs> I like the instant gratification of it. Okay, well, I was just going to say you don't do delayed gratification, do you, Craig? No, the marshmallow really. experiment with the kids in the 1960s, you would have gone yeah. to two marshmallows yeah. now instead of three yeah. at the end of the day. Okay, fine. But the, the, <laughs> the point is the slight edge is your friend. Nature works in slight edge fashion. You got addicted or dependent on alcohol in a slight edge fashion. You became dependent on cigarettes in a slight edge fashion. Unfortunately, it was a slight edge in the wrong direction. So recognize what's happened and then take it in the other direction with some small, simple changes which compound to produce a massive difference. So um, I can wheel out of my props at this point, if you like, but the, the, the point Absolutely. is that it's, it's a simple set of things to do. And if you compound more than just one penny for 30 days, so here's one, here's the wheatgrass in water, dissolving a teaspoon in a litre to start with, build it up to two teaspoons in a litre because it's very detoxing. So you do that over a two week period and take two a day. Here's my 50 plus multivitamin from Holland and Barrett. Um, you should have 40 plus though. Fish oil. Yeah, I should. I can't get that one. I'll have to tell them I've rebranded it. This is my uh, yeah. my fish oil. Cod liver oil. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is this is my healthy bacteria, gut health. 70% uh -huh. of the immune system resides in the gut. Completely ignored during the pandemic, but hugely, hugely important. Here's my zinc, particularly important for us guys, zinc and copper. Very good for your okay. hair, apart from anything else. Um, very good for your immune system. I take zinc and vitamin C at the first sign of a cold, and it usually gets rid of it straight away. Um, those are, I've just given okay. you five or six pennies to compound. <laughs> Not one, five or mm -hmm. six. If you did two of them, the wave of change would be enormous, and alcohol would taste revolting after about a month. How hard is that? So... Within a month, do you think you can see dramatic difference just by making Absolutely. a few slight changes? That's the point, but you have to do them to benefit. It's no good going down to Holland and Barrett, buying it and then sticking it on the shelf. You've got to do it. You became dependent or have a problem with alcohol because you did it repeatedly day in, day out. And, and as you probably right. know, it only takes 21 days to, consider, um, to create a habit condition a habit so what we're doing is we're actually putting the process that got you into trouble in reverse in a much better direction to create great health okay so how do you get the motivation um, i think we have a slightly dodgy wi-fi connection here so hopefully it's not uh, juddering too much how do you get the motivation to start and stick at it because uh, i've tasted wheatgrass juice um <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I'd rather suck on my socks after wearing them for a day, I think. So, how, I mean, You're how do you get the motivation? <laughs> well, <laughs> how did you get the motivation to start drinking, Craig? Well, uh, it's, it's a lot of carrot and stick. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas I can see there's a... I can see there's a lot of carrot to, to, to drinking something like wheatgrass juice. Uh, there's a lot of benefits, yeah. but I can't, I can't get over the negatives of it. Well, I think I've told you this before and you recoiled at it. <laughs> the reason it yeah. tastes rubbish is because there's a cell in the health problem. And okay. I know you don't believe me, <laughs> do you? You just think it's a convenient lie that I'm peddling. <laughs> but honestly, when you get your health right, this stuff it tastes like nectar, I can't tell you, in the same way that some people would sip on a pint of cool lager on a hot day and say, oh, God, that's so good. Same thing. Right. Just rewired my brain. Now, you know, where do you get started? Well, you get started by putting one foot in front of the other, as you well know. You know, you 
have to get going. Um, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get it started. Mm. And um, what happens then is that you literally start enjoying the benefits in a fairly short period of time to the extent that the willpower is no longer required. We know willpower is a useless form of motivation. It doesn't work. Absolutely. So you've, you've got to kind of suspend your own disbelief to start with. Um, but powerful reasons are important. When the why is powerful enough, the how becomes easy. So I always talk about come up with your own unique, powerful reasons. You know, what will getting healthy enable you to do or stop you suffering with? It might save your relationship. It might yeah. help you get the next promotion. Um, there are a whole range of things, some of which towards and some of which away from motivation. But we know that, you know, we're motivated by avoiding pain and seeking pleasure. Just plug that in. Here's a question for you. Um, how do you do this if your your partner refuses to come along for the ride? How do, you know if you if you've got into a routine uh, of drinking, junk foods, in, in, the usual sort of routine that people can easily fall into, and you, you make that decision, you say, right, enough, I'm going to make a change in my life, but the person you're living with says absolutely not. Uh, and I've seen this with with alcohol specifically. You know, one one member of the team gives up drinking. The husband or wife who continues often can get quite nasty and say things like, you're no fun anymore. You're not as relaxed as you used to be. You've changed and not in a good way. So how do you do? How do you make a profound change in your life like this if you've got someone that you're living with who's not coming along for the ride? I get it. And it's, it's an issue all the time. And I've had a lot of problems with it in the coaching that I've done. Um, if somebody really cares about you, Craig, and they have your best interests at heart, particularly your health, your longevity, the quality of your life, why would they stand in a way of something which is going to improve that? And if they can't see beyond that, you've got to question the relationship. I'll be blunt. Um, mm. You know, if, if you're in a, a truly committed partnership where you want to, you want the best for each other and the best for life why would one of you literally be holding the other underwater so they couldn't breathe yeah doesn't make any sense so i i just think it's a tough one yeah tough yeah okay. so looking and feeling younger supplements exercise yeah yeah, quitting drinking. Um, I've, got, I've got another two. Do you remember I, I was talking to you about my pinhole glasses? <laughs> is, is this them? <laughs> is right, it, this is the pinhole glasses. <laughs> Can't do this with you. This is about looking Hello. ten years younger, not looking like Ray Charles. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. I look at Stevie Wonder. I, I tell you what. The um the, the script that I'm looking at has suddenly come into really sharp focus on my screen. So I'm looking through lots of little pinholes here. And as I explained to you when we out, went out for lunch the other day, that this actually gets your eye muscles, gives your eye muscles a workout instead of getting them to be lazy, which is wearing traditional glasses, what traditional glasses do. So you do this five minutes every day. They're about 10 quid on eBay. And I know, <laughs> I've just disappeared, haven't I? You no longer have to... <laughs> <laughs> have to keep going to the uh, the optician for an addictive prescription, which just gets stronger and stronger every five years. Now it's it's another one. It's it's a racket that we've all bought. Um, but luckily, I managed to intervene fairly early, mid forties. I got an eye test, and they said, "Ah, oh, you really need glasses. Here, try these." My eyesight got worse in the space of the next couple of months. So I stopped wearing them. Bought some of these. Use them five minutes every day. Another slight edge thing. And I don't need glasses at the age of sixty one. Only in a very dark restaurant with very small print on the menu. Okay. I would love to see some comments below from anyone who has a, an opinion on this, because I know that obviously anyone that works in the optician field is going to object strongly What's about to that them? statement. Yes. To that statement okay. that prescription glasses weaken your eyes. Because I, mean, well, I remember being a kid and being told that by my parents, oh, don't get glasses, because as soon as you get glasses, that's it, your eyesight goes downhill. Uh, and I think I asked an optician about that, and he said, no, absolute nonsense, not true. But you're... Of course you're... they will. Yeah. I don't, they will. yeah. You, you, ask, you ask a publican if beer's bad for you, he's going to say, of course not. 
a couple of pints a day keeps the doctor away. Just as brandy does, as we well know. Not. Though the point is that I, 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 it's a, it's a generalisation, Craig. There will be people watching this who need glasses for various reasons. I was lucky. I only ever needed them maybe for reading. Um, but getting them would have made my eyesight worse. So I've, I've generalised deliberately to make a point. Um, but I still think that there's a lot that we can do that we don't know about or that isn't picked up in the mainstream, particularly medicine. You've heard me say that doctors have about half a day of training on nutrition in five years at medical school. I know that because I've had um, my partner, her, her, her previous partner was a doctor and her son was a doctor and they, they, they knew diddly squat about nutrition yeah. because they're, 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 they're told all about pharmacology. Um, it doesn't fit the narrative. So there's a lot of things that don't fit the narrative. But when you start to explore the alternative narrative, more importantly, put it into practice, then you realize what, what does work. Interesting stuff. Okay. Uh, so is there a book coming out on this, Andrew? Because yes. I know you, you've written previously yes. about stress in business. Is there a... Is yeah, there, a... there will, will be a book. Um, 60 is the new 40. Um something like how to add years to your life and life to your years. And um, I also have an online course, but it will be a combination of small, simple lifestyle changes, such as I've been sharing a bit of psychology, um, because I do think we need to start to look at the world differently. We need to understand what's going on with our thinking, particularly in relation to things like alcohol and cigarettes. Um, mm -hmm. And if I think, there's a lot of information that people need to, to know, but not just to know, but to put into practice to start to see the benefits. And then when you get to, addicted to the benefits, why would you go back? Yeah, exactly. And so like I say about alcohol, it's not about quitting drinking. It's about falling in love with sobriety. That's the secret. It's about being well, aware and conscious of the benefits of your new lifestyle and thinking to yourself, is. why would I ever want to go back to that old place? Well, I've, I've got a whole load of benefits here. I mean, you know, by following some of the things that I've been talking about, you're going to reduce inflammation. We know how important inflammation is in alcohol, in depression, in major conditions. You're going to um, reduce the risk of life-threatening illnesses mm -hmm. like cancer, strokes, diabetes, heart attacks. You reduce the risk of depression and anxiety. Imagine the cost reduced to the NHS in the UK or other health providers around the world. Your sleep's going to improve. Your brain health will improve. We know that Alzheimer's and dementia are a big problem these days. Not sure if it's my imagination, but when I was a kid, we didn't have massive care homes where people were sent with dementia and Alzheimer's. What's gone on, Craig? It's got to be lifestyle, hasn't it? Because it has to be, it has to be lifestyle and uh, other uh, artificial elements like pollution. Um, that are causing it um it has to be it has to be and i mean your skin will improve your skin is the biggest organ in the body and we know that you know alcohol and cigarettes manifest very visibly in the skin you know people get cut wrinkly necks they get um some mottled skin they, they age prematurely um you know you, you can get these things out of your life you weren't born needing them you know, they're pre prohibited from being consumed by children for very good reasons. And women are told not to drink or smoke during pregnancy for very good reasons. So, again, when you reweigh your brain around this, you see it, it is utter nonsense that we're all pursuing this, this social myth. And, and as I say, I fell into it with big alcohol in my 20s. Well, that was fascinating, Andrew. And thank you very much for coming on again. It was great to speak to you. I'm sure I will see you in a couple of days for a bike ride. Look forward to and it, I Craig. Will, yeah, on your new electric not. bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, looking forward to uh, doing some of those big hills. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> but you can keep your wheatgrass juice. I'm afraid uh, you're not going to be able to convert me to that. Yeah, we'll but, see. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll stay at it. Thank you for coming on. If you want some advice uh, from Andrew, he's always good for uh, a few pointers and has got some interesting points, go to his website, andrewbridgewater.com. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I know he's always happy to reply to emails as well and even offer you a bit of coaching if that's uh, something you'd like to try. So go and see Andrew at his website. If you are 
here because you're questioning your drinking and looking for the first step, then sign up to today's free quit drinking webinar, stopdrinkingexpert.com, and you'll get that free download just for going along. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Discover the world's most successful and respected online quit drinking program today. It's different to anything you can find out there, and it gives you real mental freedom from the clutches of alcohol. Break back helps you understand what alcohol does to you, how it works. I always recommend it to anybody. It's just so worth it. Why did I waste all those years? Are you finally ready to take action? Your sober journey begins 11 a.m. Sunday. Reserve your space at my next free quit drinking webinar.